आचार्य सिंह रूपी ने नमय विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती शिवाशुभादेवी दयताय विभाद कृष्णा समंध विज्ञाने प्रभु मातृज उज्जल प्रमा शिरोपाभक्ति गौरकुणाशक्ति विघ्न आय नमस्ते नमस्ते गौरवाणी श्रीमद नाम गौर केशराय साक्षात वैराग्यमूर्त हे प्रलम पादुजम भक्ति विनदाय सच्चिदानंदनामिने गौर शक्ति स्वूपाय नमो महावदनाय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय कृष्ण चैतन्य गौरती नम हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु देन बंधु जगतपति गोपेश बबिका कंत राधा नमस्ते तत्त कंचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी नमामि हरि प्रिय वृंदावी तुलसी देवी प्रिया केशव सज श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्रीत गदासवासादी श्री गौरभक्त हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे हरे जय उपसनातन भक्त रघुना श्री गोपाल भक्त दास रघुना हे चय गोस्वाई करी चर वंद जहा हुई ते विघ्न अधीर चरण से भक्त संगवास जनम जनम हो रे
पास कीर्तन करो मानो जल करो हरे कृष्णा हरे
who has come from very rest cultured family. It is so big business. There are so many cars, so many properties. He has very beautiful son and daughters. So he he feels very and happy in this world. <coughs> But why do you preach that you should try to do bhajan? Why we say? If any man is so happy, so rich, then you can go and want donation from him and he sometimes rebukes, sometimes he will let to donate. But why you are telling him that, oh, you should do bhajan? What is the use of doing bhajan if anyone is happy in this world? Can you speak on this? Thank you. First of all, I offer my unlimited obeisance to the Lotus people, to the Guru Maharaj, and pray for His Godless mercy so that I can carry out His orders. And I offer my respectful obeisance unto all the Vaishnava devotees who are present here. And I also beg their mercy so that I can fulfill Shri Gurudev's desires. Shri Gurudev has requested, has ordered me to speak something on why there is necessity for any happy person in this material world to do bhajan. As we see in the developed countries or in India also, there are many people who are well established in their life. They have <coughs> excess of wealth. Outwardly, if we see at their life, there's no problems because what a common person aspires, they all have those, they have all those possessions. And what is even beyond the conception of an ordinary poor person they have. They have connections with so many highly uh, positioned persons in the government. They have power of money. So they can control so many things. So that's why more often they feel that they are God themselves. So there is no need for them to worship any other God. But there is an important point to be noticed and that is that the happiness they are driving is temporary. This is the fact. It may last for a few years, but very soon they will become old and even if they are young, they are having so many diseases. We see a person, very beautiful, very handsome, he has dressed himself with so many wealthy, so many costly, expensive clothes, but he may be having so much stomach that he cannot even stand. And he may have disease like diabetes and he cannot enjoy so many sweets. So there's so many nice sense objects, but he cannot enjoy. So he's suffering. He has access to those sense enjoyment objects, but he cannot use. And to maintain that position in the society, in today's time we all know it's very difficult. He has to speak so many lies, he has to do so many illegal things, which, which itself is so much botheration. 
and he's so much tensed to keep hold of what he has. So, not just that, but also on the emotional platform, we see all those people who are surrounding him, they are simply uh, having exchanges of different levels of relationships with him because of their selfishness. They are not with him for his sake, but they are there for their sake. So, as any opportunity comes, when they are not able to have any benefit from that person, they reject him. At that point, he realizes, yes, I was really wasting my life. I remember one story which Shila Gurudev often tells, that in Bombay, there used to be a very wealthy person. So much wealth. And one of the disciples of Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saswati Thakur, who was preaching in Bombay, he went to him and he wanted to go and meet him. But his doorkeepers or the guards would not let him go in the building and meet him. So he was coming again and again. He came and he said, you should tell him that I want to meet him for a very important matter. His servant went to him and asked that there's one sadhu looking person and he says he has very important matter to discuss with you. And he wants that immediately you should give him some time. And this wealthy person, he thought, oh, he must be asking for some donations. This is sheer wasted of time. Give him some few hundred rupees and he should go from here. So this officer comes to him and then says, okay, you can take this money and don't bother him. This is what you want. He said, no, no, I don't want money. I want to talk to him. I don't want money. So this person comes back to this wealthy person and tells, no, no, this person is not asking that I want money. He says he just wants to meet you. He said, no, I know these people. This wealthy person says, said, you should give him thousands of rupees. My time is much, much more important. I should not waste my time with this sadhu. So this person again comes, again comes back to the sadhu and offers him even bigger amount of money. But he was astonished when the sadhu said, I don't want money. I want to talk to him. But unfortunately, this person did not give him the opportunity to meet him. And the sadhu left just like that. Exactly after one year, one year of time, one day when the sadhu was moving on the same street, in front of that same very building, he saw there was a person who was sitting and he was trying to sell some very ordinary items for a few paisa. And he was wearing very shabby clothes and he was very sad in his life as if some disaster has happened. So this sadhu approached to this person and said, do you remember me? Can you identify me? Or uh, Because this person has not met the sadhu, so he cannot recognize. But then sadhu himself revealed his identity. He said, I'm the same person who was, if you remember, I tried to meet you one year ago while you were sitting in that building. But today, his goal of the business was finished. He has lost all his possessions and he was a street beggar. There was no one who was helping him. And this time, he was having so much time for this sadhu. And the sadhu said, that's what I wanted to tell you. That I could see your future was heading towards disaster. So I wanted that you could prepare yourself, but you did not give me time. So like this, we see so many cases. And not just that. In today's world, life has become so cheap. So many bomb blasts, so many things. One is not sure how long he's going to live. So happiness is not based on these material possessions. Because we can claim and we can see every single person who has wealth, if we go and ask him, are you satisfied and happy in your life? And he may claim just to uh, satisfy his false ego, but actually, if we really see and observe, he's tensed. He has no one to share his love with him, selflessly. So that's why it's very important that uh, to attain real happiness, not just in this material world, but also in our next future lives. We should have a clear conception who I am, what is soul, I am Atma, I am different from this material body and actually it is Atma which enjoys, it's not the body. So even if we have all the items or facilities, 
to satisfy and comfort our body, but they cannot really give us happiness. So, if I am able to understand what, who I am, what is my nature, what is my service, what are my activities, and thus, within this life, under the guidance of a pure bona fide Gurudev, who has come in the disciplic succession and has that ability to lift us from the material world and our low situation, then there is some chance that we can, within this life, understand the goal of life. And not just we can understand, but we can also practice and realize ourselves and thus make perfection. First of all, I offer my thousands of Dandavat Pushpanjali at the Lotus feet of my beloved Dikshi Guru Pada Padma, Om Vishnu Pada Paramahansa Stotra Sattva Rupanu Gajaja Varja, Sri Sri Madhu Bhakti Vedanta Naranga Swami Maharaj. Secondly, I give my pranam to my Guru Varga and to all the Samuel Vaishnavas. So, in Shrimad Bhagavatam, in the 11th canto, Krishna, <coughs> Bhagavan Sri Krishna, he has given some very pertinent instructions to all of mankind. What is that? Labdwa sudurlabham idam bahusam bhavanti manusham artadam anittam api adhira Turanam yate tanapate anumritu yavan nisraya saya vishaya kalu saravata syat. Here Krishna is explaining All of us who have taken birth in the human form of life have been afforded an extremely rare opportunity. After many, many births in this material world of suffering and struggling for existence, in many, many species, we have, by the natural evolutionary process, attained this human form of life. This human form of life, although it is anitya, it is temporary, it is subject to be lost at any moment, still, it is very meaningful. Arta dhan, some arta, some, something valuable can be acquired in this life. What is that? That is pure love, praying for the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, without which no one can be happy. Sriman Pundarik Prabhu was explaining how many wealthy persons may be there with so many facilities in this world, but actually no one can be happy if they're alone. The most worth wealthy person with so many facilities and so many opportunities, he is not happy unless he has some friends or family members or someone with which to uh, enjoy all of those facilities. Because the real necessity of the soul, the real thing that we all need is love and affection. This is our real genuine hunger, our genuine thirst. But the love and affection that we will find exchanged with the other living entities in this world will never satisfy the soul. 
because this love is material, it is temporary, it is based on selfishness, and therefore it will never satisfy the soul. Only when the love is pure will the soul be satisfied. And the love will be pure if the object of our love is pure. So we have to know that the object of our love is not the temporary things of this world, but the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They are the actual object of our love. So this is the prayogen, this is the uh, substance which is meant to be acquired in this rare human form of life. So Krishna is giving the instruction. That if you have taken birth in the human form of life, because it is temporary, don't waste any time. Very quickly, very energetically, and very enthusiastically, try to put all of your time, all of your energy, all of the tendency of your consciousness into bhajan, so that you can attain this very rare and wonderful uh, gift, which is only available in this human form of life. Don't become distracted and chase after the so-called pleasures of this material world. Nishreya saya vishaya kalusara vata Nishreya. These things, they are not shreya. They are not for our ultimate benefit. We will not find any happiness or any shelter in the temporary manifestations of this world. So Krishna is nishreya saya vishaya. The objects of the senses, kalusara vata asyat. They are available everywhere. In every form of life, so much sense gratification comes automatically by our karma. So we should not endeavor for these things. Why should we endeavor for these things? When automatically in time all sense objects come and also suffering will also come. All happiness will come and all suffering will come automatically by our karma. No one works hard to suffer. Yet suffering comes anyway without any endeavor whatsoever. In the same way, all types of material pleasures, they will also come without any endeavor. So why should we put our energy into this? Tasyaiva heito prayate te kovido nalabhyate yat brahmatamu pariyada talabhyate dukabad anitasukam kalena savatra gabira ranghasa Shiman Bhagavatam, it is described a person who is actually intelligent and philosophically inclined will not endeavor for those that happiness which comes from sense gratification or that happiness which can be derived in any place in this material world from the lower planetary systems all the way up to Brahmalok everything is like poison actually for the soul but rather he should endeavor for the, to attain the real goal of life because all material things, they're, they're coming automatically. So, in this world, no matter what situation we're in, so we feel so much dissatisfaction. Either materially, or if one has so many material facilities, emotionally and spiritually, there is no satisfaction here. So, what is the remedy? What is actually the cause of all of our problems? So, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he described the root cause of our problems to Srila Sanatana Goswami. Krishna Bhuli Sehi Jiva Anadiva Hir Mukha Atayeva Mayatardiya Sangsara Dukha The Jiva has forgotten Krishna. We have forgotten Krishna. We have become averse to Krishna turn, and turning our faces away from Krishna because due to this fault, Maya, Krishna's material energy, is inflicting so many miseries upon us. So, if one wants to understand what is the answer to all problems, what is the panacea which will cure the disease of our dissatisfaction, then that is simply to remember Krishna. To always remember Krishna and never forget Krishna. So this is the essence of bhajan.
भक्ति योग भक्ति योग भक्ति योग धन भक्ति है कृष्ण नाम स्मरण कंदन भक्ति योग मीन्स इट इज अ ग्रेट वेल्थ वॉट इज दैट वेल्थ टू ऑलवेज रिमेम्बर कृष्ण नेम एंड शेड थियर्स ऑफ लव सो दिस ह्यूमन फॉर्म ऑफ लाइफ इट इज वेरी रेयरली अटेन्ड इट इज वेरी वेरी टेम्पररी सो ऑल ऑफ द स्क्रिप्चर्स दे इनकरेज Uthishtata jagrata prapya varam nibodata Don't be lazy Don't sleep in the darkness of ignorance But rather get up Wake up And attain uh, That very uh, The actual goal Of this human form of life Vanchakalpatrubhasa Kipasin gubhutya Pritanam padamayam Vashtali piyomayam Him, you can understand that he has so many problems. 
His family member is opposed to him. Sometimes if his son is favorable, his wife not favorable, if wife is favorable, son is not favorable, other relatives are not favorable. So he's facing so many problems. So no one happy in this world. So what is the necessity of these human beings? So in scriptures, Sri Bhagavatam and other scriptures warned us uh, why Bhagavan give us this human body? What is our duty? So Prem Prajan Prabhu discuss, I want to discuss another sloka. Nirdeham Abdam Sulobam Sudrulobam Plavam Sukalpam Guru Karnadharam Mayanu Kulena Ravasataritam Puman Bhavabdim Natariasat Maha Nirdeham Abdam Sulobam Sudrulobam that he we cross so many species. After that, Bhagavan give us being cashless merciful this human body to do bhajan. If we don't do bhajan, we have to suffer again that cycle of birth and death. So what is the necessity of human life? Nirdham Atam Sulabham, it is very rare. There is 84 less kinds of species. Among them, human beings only four lakhs types. If we go through Rup Siksha, Rup Mahaprabhu instruct Rup Goswami, then we can understand that very few person do bhajan in this planet. So we are so fortunate who surrendered himself, the lotus feet of Bonafed Gurudev, and associates with Vaishnavas and doing bhajan, they are most fortunate in this planet. Our human body, <coughs> Only for doing bhajan, it is very rare and it is very easy to do bhajan. So, call from Guru Kar, how we shall do bhajan? Just like if we across any big river or ocean, you want any boat or ship like this. But you need one captain to drive the ship. So, our human body, like a ship or boat. So, who is boatman? Who is captain? Guru Karanadharam. Guru Padma is captain in our human life. So if any passenger who journey by boat, if he don't care for captain, then he, have to suffer, he has to suffer. So if we don't care for Guru Padma, we have to suffer life after life, birth after birth. So Guru Karanadharam, Mayanu Kule Naravasate Ritam. Maya Anukul is favorable air, just like you have seen in ocean. There is so big, big boat, and they put some cloth in on that boat. That sail. If it get favorable air, <coughs> without any effort, we can journey by boat very easily. So what is the sail here? Guru Mayanu Kule Navasate Ritam, the Guru that Seol is here, good association. If we, in good association, then we can across this life circle of art and death, and we can attain the service of divine couple. Mayanu Kule Navasate Ritam, we get so many chances that good association and one of his guru dev, yet if we not do bhajan, then we are killer of our soul. Sometimes we have heard and we have seen in newspaper that he did suicide, committed suicide, but not. He kill his own <coughs> body, not soul. None can kill soul, but if we not do bhajan, then we are killer of own, our own soul. So we have to do bhajan because in as as well as human beings, if you take birth in other species, that you can get food, sleep, you can, uh, you can, the four things is common to all as well as human beings, eating, sleeping, fearing, mating, everything is in other than human beings also. So, what the speciality of human beings? If we do bhajan, then they are, we can successful our human beings. Other than like 
dog, pig, monkey, donkey, they're also eating, sleeping, and peering and mating, but they could not do bhajan. If we do bhajan, then we can identify us as a human being, otherwise we are not eligible to say that we are human beings, because Bhagavan give us this human body to do bhajan only. So, being human, being coming human beings, we have to be in good association and we have to surrender ourselves, the lotus feet of Bonafide Guru Dev, under his guidance, we have to do bhajan. If we do bhajan, then our life will be successful. If we do not do so, our life will be spoiled and we are killer of our own soul. Hare Krishna. Panchakal Patalu Pasta Kripas in Dupai Vacha, Patita Nang Pavani Pu, Vishnu Pu, Namo. Radhe Jaya Jaya
Sisters, I'm so big family. 